The Storm Ender is a launcher unlike anything we've ever seen before in Call of Duty. So naturally, you may be wondering if it's worth unlocking. In this video, I'll be reviewing how it works in multiplayer and in zombies. Please don't forget to drop a like if you find this video valuable. Rather than firing explosives like a traditional launcher, the Storm Ender fires an EMP blast that will either disable or destroy enemy electronics. And that is all it will do in multiplayer modes. It does not deal any player damage or prevent players from being able to use equipment or kill streaks or anything like that. It only disables a player's HUD for the EMP duration, which is 5 seconds. The Storm Ender can one-shot most electronic throwables and field upgrades including things like claymores, proximity mines, scatter mines, breacher drones, recon drones, and tack inserts. It will also one-shot kill streaks, including the counter UAV, which is super satisfying to do that thing can get instantly destroyed when it goes in the air. It can also one-shot the bomb drone, the mosquito drone, and cluster mines, and my, my favorite, the cruise missile. As soon as you hear a cruise missile inbound, you can look up in the sky and destroy it as long as you are fast enough. And if you do, it feels so satisfying. You need to land your shot though as you only have one or two tries before the missile will reach the ground. The missile travels fast of course, but there also is a half a second delay after you pull the trigger on the storm ender before it will fire. Plus, there's roughly an 800 millisecond delay after each shot before you can pull the trigger again. The Storm Ender's handling and mobility is similar to the RGL launcher, meaning that swapping to the Storm Ender to take out aerial streaks is going to be much faster than the Pila launcher, which specializes in that area. Plus, there's no lock-on delay or anything like that, which is why shooting cruise missiles with the Storm Ender is actually practical. For killstreaks that take more than one shot to destroy, the Storm Ender will temporarily disable that streak for 5 seconds. This only applies to automated killstreaks though, like the, uh, the Sentry Turret or Guardians. Player controlled killstreaks aren't affected much at all. The Storm Ender will mess with the HUD for the player, but their ability to actually use said killstreak isn't disrupted whatsoever. This is why the Storm Ender isn't really effective against the gunship, which takes, uh, I'd estimate, about 100 shots from the Storm Ender to destroy, judging off its damage icon. I personally wouldn't recommend wasting your time shooting at the gunship with this because you're probably not going to destroy it unless you have an entire team with storm enders firing at it kill streaks that you actually can disable and destroy include the uav which takes two shots the guardian and the sam turret both take three shots uh, the remote turret and the wilson will take 10 shots each and then the vtol chopper gunner and overwatch Hilo take 12 shots to destroy as for the remaining streaks that I haven't name dropped yet, I personally wouldn't waste your time on them. I mean, the Swarm, the Advanced UAV, the Carpet Bomb, the Juggernaut, the Precision Airstrike, and the SAE, they're all either impossible to hit, they require near impossible timing for you to actually hit them, or the Storm Ender is just going to be straight up ineffective. On a similar note, I played around with vehicles in Ground War for a bit, and it seems like some vehicles will get disabled for a second or two, and some aren't affected at all. So I don't think this will be a launcher that you can wipe out a team with traveling in a car, unfortunately. The last thing worth mentioning for multiplayer before we switch gears to zombies is the range on the Storm Ender is infinite, as long as you have a direct line of sight. The Storm Ender can shoot through walls, but the range will be capped at 10 meters. In Zombies, the Storm Ender leaves a lot to be desired until you start stacking rarities and pack-a-punch. Without any upgrades, it can damage up to 4 zombies at a time, but it takes 5 shots to kill. Now the Storm Ender keeps its infinite ammo in zombies, so technically you have infinite killing power, but it's not very effective without any upgrades on it. The one useful thing the Storm Ender can do is it will slow down zombies you hit for a total of 3 seconds. This applies at all times no matter the rarity, the pack-a-punch, or the difficulty zone you are in. As long as you aren't killing the zombie, of course, you will slow them down. I also learned that you can fire the Storm Ender while you're down, similar to the Ray Gun. 
You may have noticed the Storm Ender can one-shot zombies, so how much Pack-a-Punch and like rarity upgrades does it need to do that? Tier 1 Pack-a-Punch still took 3 shots to kill. Tier 1 Pack-a-Punch with a blue rarity still took 2 shots to kill. It wasn't until I had Tier 2 Pack-a-Punch with the blue rarity where I started getting one shots with this weapon. And when you get one shots with the Storm Ender, it's actually devastating and really fun to use. Pack-a-Punch will double its fire rate and its range, at least with the blue rarity and the tier 2 Pack-a-Punch, was 90 meters. You could snipe zombies across the map with this thing. It's crazy. It's like a, uh, at least for, for tier 1 modes, the Storm Ender feels very reminiscent of like the Thunder Gun. It feels like a wonder weapon. It has infinite ammo. It has crazy range. It can one shot. So if you ever need something like that for tier one contracts or anything, the Storm Ender is the perfect weapon for you. I don't think it will ever be able to one shot in tier three zones. Maybe it can in tier two with the tier three pack a punch and max rarity, but I think you'll have the most success thinking of the Storm Ender as a utility weapon in zombies, unless you have the resources to increase its damage and you can kill freely with it. You can always use the Storm Ender to get out of a tight pinch or provide cover for your teammates while you're down like you can with the ray gun. I think the mode you'll find the Storm Ender most helpful in is modes like Search and Destroy, where you won't see many high kill streaks, so it can like one and two shot most of them, and you'll be able to fire at equipment through walls, which is very frequent in Search because people are trying to cut off lanes and cut off lines of sight. Uh, and as long as you pair this with the Engineer Vest, you shouldn't ever, you shouldn't be cut off from a part of the map as long as you have the Storm Ender in your hands. So if that sounds like you, I'd recommend unlocking it. If it isn't, it's a nice option to have, but I wouldn't say it's a must-have at the moment. And for those of you wondering if this is a good alternative weapon for the Mastery Camo Grind, in Zombies, I'd say, yeah, you just need to invest in upping its damage for a couple games. In Multiplayer, this thing is a nightmare. You have to get 25 enemy equipment destructions which is like you know bouncing betties and claymores and that jazz which is extremely rare and frustrating to do in multiplayer right now for the completionist camos you do have the option to destroy kill streaks which is far more easier but i intended to get gold camo for this video and it, it it's incredibly frustrating to do so leave a comment let me know if you will be unlocking the storm ender i'm curious to hear what people think Thanks for watching. Don't forget to tap that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel and I'll catch you on the next one.